Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Tina Marie, and today we are joined by our excellent chef, Chef Chris Scarduzio of Table 31, Mia and Scarduzio's yes. at the Showboat Casino in Atlantic City. Yes, babe. Welcome back, sir. Uh, my pleasure. So my pleasure. pleased to have you here. It's always a pleasure to be here. We also love featuring wines on our show. It's yes. a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to cook with and to drink with. Today we'll be featuring a selection of Rhone Valley wines. Mm -hmm. So we'll be having some tastings and some cooking. You have two delicious recipes planned for us today. Yeah, we're going to do uh, a bouillon base. You know, very easy to do at home. Uh, not so much the restaurant style, and then we're going to do a gnocchi uh, hunter style to go with uh, the red. This is excellent wine. We had a chance to taste them earlier, so they're going to go great with the food. And a lot of spice in the wine and the spice that's in the food will help complement each other very well. Perfect. So we're going to start off here with the bouillon base. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have lobster, we have uh, cod, mussels, clams, great selection and a lot of, of different seafood. vegetables. But you know, some things that we can also like to teach is, you know, when you check for mussels, mm -hmm. the way to help their lobby squeeze it, if they pop back open again, they're dead. But like this one's a little open, hold it for 10 seconds, right. and it won't open up again. It's oh, still that's alive. an excellent tip, Chef. So, so if it pops back open, discard it. Discard it. Okay. So we're going to start off with some olive oil, and we're going to start with the things that take the most long to cook first. Okay. So we're going to sweat a little garlic first in the oil. Hot this pan. is showcasing your, you know, traditional French techniques, French style yes, cooking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, French is blue base. So. Yeah. And let me sweat the garlic here. Okay. Now, I want you. This pan's already starting to get hot a little bit, so we're going to kind of do a, a bunch of different things at one time. So, I want you to as well take this, and I'm going to take a piece of cod. So, the, is the cod going to take? Obviously, longer to cook. Well, the clams are going to take the, obviously the longest. So okay. we just want to get a little sweat. We don't want no color, just a lightly uh, blonde. There it is. That is blonde. Okay. Clams have been purged. Okay. And right away, just a tad bit of salt. Okay. Because clams tend to be a little salty. Pepper, and we have here a little bit of chili spice. What is this called again, Chef? It's a little chili spice. Chili spice. Okay. Just chili peppers in there. Over the claims, and what I like to do is just for a little bit of acid along with the zest, squeeze that in there. Great. Okay. And I'm going to cover it. So it's just enough wine so to cover. Clam, yeah, as the claims start to purge and open up, well, they're already purged. As soon as they start to open up, we'll go ahead, we'll add our mussels. That'll be the shellfish. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to cook each individual piece as the time it takes. I so see. obviously, the first one we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of cod. Okay. If you don't have cod, and you want to work with another piece of white fish. What would you recommend? Uh, Bronzino, oh, okay. flounder, Any sort of halibut. White, yeah, a nice white, white flaky fish. fish. We want to start there with the cod. Here we have some scallops. Why don't you go ahead and season them up a little sure, bit as well. certainly. Put some finger meat potatoes. Finger meat potatoes. Is this a classic bully base? Well, it's about as classic as I can get here in America versus what they do in Paris or they do down the south. Okay. You know, it's just like when you make meatballs and spaghetti at yes. home. It's just a yes. classic meatball. Like everybody always adds their little addition little to it. Touch. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead here. Beautiful, right. nice color. Nice sear there. So we're not going to cook this through all the way, correct, Chris? No, it's, yeah, we're gonna cook it through. It's we gonna are. be medium rare. Okay. We don't want to cook it all, so we're gonna add our scallops. Because we're going to eventually add it. Yes. Right? Okay. And then what I like to do with the lobster. Now again, if you don't have fresh Maine lobster and you want to use some lobster meat, that's fine. Let's go start with the shell side up. Okay. Shell side up. Mm -hmm. Are these cooked lobsters, Chef? They're cooked lobster shells, okay. yes. So these are artichoke hearts? Yes. And I'm going to put the sauce here. This will be our veg. Mm -hmm. And the potatoes are already blanched. Okay. Okay, so we're almost done here with the scallops. One thing you don't want to do is, you know, bon cuit, like you say, a little overcooked and Right. So, so everything comes together. We'll put our mussels in as Add well. Give this a little stir, and these should all open up nicely together. So the mussels take less time than the clams. The mussels will take less time than the clams. I like to add a little lobster stock here. Okay. And you can tell the lobster stock is so nice and rich. I'm going to emulsify it with a little touch of butter there. Like Chef, did you make the lobster stock? Is yes. that yours? Yes, absolutely. And you use the shells and everything to make that? Is yes. that correct? So I'm going to show you a little trick how to reduce the sauce real quick as well. So while that's going, okay. get a, another saute pan. Again, this is a restaurant technique if people like to be curious how it happens. 
get this thing real hot and I'll show you how to reduce it. We are really curious. Well. That's that's our that's our that's the right. name of our game is curiosity. We're gonna add some tomatoes here. I want you to give that a stir. Okay. A little bit of fresh thyme. And Cherry some tomatoes, parsley. fresh herb. Okay. And some basil at the very end. Give that a stir. Good. Okay. Now again, when you stir the shellfish a lot, you wonder how you lose the meat that's in the shellfish. Like you're looking to claim they'll have nothing in it. Yes. That's because somebody's stirring and agitating and Too agitating much. and agitating. And then the meat releases from the muscle. So you see we're kind of cooking quick so from the bottom up one or two stirs and then let it go. Okay. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of the Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm amazed at how quickly this dish comes together, really. Yeah, well, but it's all about mise en place. You know, as yeah. you showed, though, it's all in the timing. I mean, because yeah. you had you had two, you know, flames going on, actually three, and you were cooking a lot of things at the same time. Yeah. So it's all a matter of prior preparation. Put the potatoes that have been blanched nicely. Some carrots, and again, really in no particular order because, you know, as you're going to see, everything's going to get covered. This is like, I like to put it like a, a nice little surprise for the guests at the bottom. Yeah, they're, un they're not and expecting. And this helps, this helps make the dish hearty as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just not, instead of eating just all the seafood and complete proteins, our shellfish. Beautiful. It's all opened up together See at the same time. See all those muscles opened up, the clams. Up, again, all in ex right. exquisite timing on your part, Jeff. And uh, the fish isn't overcooking. It's nice. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is to get this to reduce down quickly. Okay, you see that the pan's okay. hot? Yes. Now what we did is we created some surface area. Okay. So now you got a wider surface area versus a smaller surface area. More heat. And now this sauce right here is going to come together real nice. You know, a little nappe. So it's going to reduce? It's going to reduce down to a little nappe. And, and the fact that you put it into a wider surface area yeah. helps it to reduce faster, That's Chef? That's correct. Okay. And already hot. Now if it okay. was cold, it wouldn't have reduced so quick. Take some mussels here. As many as you like. Now, if you want a big bowl, this is great family style as well. Yes. But for what we're doing and the application of what we're doing here, I keep this simple for everybody. Nice so you place that cod. in a hole? On top. Beautiful. Look at that. We'll Generous. Some, we'll take some dish. scallops. Oh, yes. Look at this. It encourages everyone to just come together and. That broth is, is perfect for dipping yep. some beautiful yep. bread in, too. This is. Pull the lobster out a little mm -hmm. bit right there. Now you see the steam coming out. Yes. It's nice, it's moist. And then what I have here is I have a little bit of mashed potato, pump puree that we made, and we put a little bit of saffron in there. Oh, and that, so that gives now, it that. traditionally what they'll do is they do like a mayonnaise, some, you know, you, you go to certain parts, they'll do like a roux of saffron and mayonnaise. Yes. But for this application, I like to do a little bit of potato and a little pinch of saffron. So it's giving it that yep. little, that golden hue, yep. that reddish and, and golden hue. A little hue. saffron in here as well to give it a little, little more kick and the spice. So is this typical for uh, bouillabaisse? Absolutely. Is this your little, okay, Everything it is. here: tomato, basil, okay. saffron, a little bit of spice, and we have a nice baguette right here. Cut That's it why it's such a celebratory type of dish. It has so many fantastic ingredients. Oh in yeah, it. this is great. And then we're going to take our spoon with the saffron roux mm -hmm. and pump puree. Wow. Beautiful flavored sauce. Chive. And you are good to go. Wow. So we get to taste this now with Daphne Payon from Rhone Valley Ooh. Wines and Kevin Keyes. Essentially your right hand man, you said, at yeah. Table 31 and yeah. he at all yes. your restaurants. Yes. Wonderful. He's also he helps with everything and uh, he helped um, with the wine selections and food pairings. Spectacular. What an exuberant dish for such a lively part of France. Beautiful. Tell us a little it's bit. It's like the Rhone Valley right now. Yeah, what no. is the terroir like in the Rhone Valley? It's very diverse. Um, some flat plains, some Would hills. Like pour, Kevin? And um, you have two different regions in the Rhone Valley. The Northern Rhone, which is much more um, steep slopes. And then the Southern Rhone, which is more hilly mm -hmm. and very soft and warm climate, so very fitted to a bouillabaisse dish. It's perfect. Reminds you of home a little bit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. She's very excited. I'm going to try one of the clams. These are Prince Edward Island are delicious. These are Prince Edward Island mussels? Yeah, I find the best. Nice mm. to get a spoon too with the broth and, mm -hmm. and the wine. It all goes very well mm. together. Now let's try the wine. Really wonderful flavoring. So really a perfect light 
light, yes. light wine. And uh, the chef cooked with a Ventoux wine, with this wine. So mm -hmm. it's um, wine from the Ventoux area, which is very south of the, of the Rhone region. It's mm. a blend of uh, white Grenache, Claret, Bourboulin, and Roussan. So very typical and um, indigenous grape from the Rhone Valley. You have that honey, the, the white flowers, a lot of florals that you have in the saffron here. But you got a little bit of spice, so the bright minerality I think goes great with the shellfish and just that light white wine broth. I love this wine. It's just with outstanding. Seafood. It's a natural it's, pairing, natural marriage. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's very it's very comforting as well. It's yeah. nothing. It's not a pretentious dish. I don't view the wine as a very pretentious wine. Uh, for me, the wine is very refreshing and very comfortable. So with the other white, we are going north. North? So north of the Rhone Valley, up to Croze Hermitage. Okay. And this one is a um, one grape blend, only Marsan, which is also very typical from the, from the Rhone Valley. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lit, little bit more full-bodied, but still very easy to, uh, to go with food, because those wines are not overwhelming. It's all about going with the food and mm -hmm. making it even better than it is. Cheers, everyone. Okay. Salute. So we have, a, we have a, another one from the Rhone Valley, um, a, a red Grenache that we're going to do as well. Yes. And we did a tasting, Kevin and I, we paired it up. So we, we kind of figured a good uh, hunter style, again, a little bit of spice, woody, gnocchi mm. with uh, mushrooms. And we're going to show you how to do that as well. Excellent. A nice change from yes. this dish. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. And I, actually, Kevin, you have one more wine to be showing us today. The second one had a little more, a little more smoke and wood than it did minerality or the, the bright uh, florals. And a red, and it seems that the Cote d'Ivoire region is known for the red wines. Yes, it's mainly red, like over 60% of the production, but we have very, very nice rosé, dry rosé sure. and, um, and white. Mm, excellent. And so this red is a uh, Costière de Nîmes. So we are going back to the south of the Rhone region, mm -hmm. and it's a blend of uh, Grenache, Syrah, and Carignan. Beautiful blend. Mm. Robust, earthy, lovely, really lovely. So I'm going to start over here with this um, with this gnocchi dish, and again, we're going to use some fresh gnocchi. But again, if you want to use a both. pasta, a box pasta, that's fine. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the chef's kitchen. We now return to the chef's kitchen. You have another showstopper for us, don't I you? I hope so, yeah. We're gonna do some, um, again, it's about wine and food together. Mm -hmm. So uh, we tasted uh, the wine. Again, it's a, it's a very floral ganache, uh, a little touch of spice to it. So we're gonna marry that up with a little bit of a, of a woody hunter style type of uh, gnocchi dish. Love your description of that. That sounds fantastic. So again, we have our water boiling, we have our mise en place, we have our pan with the mm -hmm. oil. We're gonna just put a little bit of pinch of salt in our water. We want to sweat a tiny bit of garlic. Okay, so you've made these gnocchi in advance? Yes. Okay. But again, when you're making gnocchi, it's the, the whole key is, you know, most importantly is starting with a fresh potato. Okay. New kind of gold is what I prefer to use. And do you bake them or boil them? Boil them. Okay. Start off with the raw mushrooms here. Got a little oyster mushrooms. Great. We're gonna sweat them. And these are the raw items, and then we're going to also sweat this with some, a little bit of zucchini. Zucchini. Oh, nice addition, zucchini. Okay. Now these mushrooms, again, they don't need to be cooked all the way through. I love the freshness mm. of them. The zucchini was already slightly blanched. Okay. So, you know, and this is our fresh gnocchi. So sometimes what happens is you put so much pasta in the water that the water temperature comes down. Okay. Right? And then, you know, before you know it, you have mush in your gnocchi. Okay, all right. That's another thing, that's a great thing to think about. Yeah, so it's, it's always good proportion. Okay. So we have a good sweat on that. They're lightly tender. We're gonna add a little bit of pulled short rib meat. Now, if you don't have short rib, you know, you could use anything. You wanna use a little ham hock. Could you, you even use, use a, a pork? A, a pork? You, can, you, you can use a pork, pulled you can pork? use, yeah, you can use some um, steak meat, you can use because anything. Because you're doing earthy, yeah, woody. You, yeah, you can use bacon if you just wanna sure. use bacon. Okay. You know? So we're gonna add our short rib. I have here an assortment of wild forest mushrooms mm. and some other hen of the woods and that are a little bit more hardier mushroom. Okay. I like to give them a little head start. I here I have some caramelized pearl onions. Okay. What are and these the caramelized sugar. in? These are just caramelized with a little bit of butter, okay. sugar, and chicken stock. Good. Seared up real nice, covered, deglacé, a little bit of sugar, and it's going to add a little touch of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. So you got a little sweet, a little sour, and here, just for the wine, now for this wine, I'll add it 
If I wasn't having this wine, I wouldn't have made it spicy, but this will go well. Some chili. Again, a little, little bit of chili puree to add a little spice to the dish. Okay. We'll season this in the beginning, adjust in the end. A little salt, a little pepper. This is really a hearty, rustic dish. Hearty, rustic, yeah. hunter, cold. Yes. Or, you know, e even if it's if it's a nice day outside, a nice spring day, and you just want to relax and, you know, kind of yeah. fill yourself up on something. Yes. You're not feeling so good someday. Yeah, you this will make you feel up. very this good. This will make you feel good, girlfriend. You trust me on that one. With deglacé and a little touch of wine. And this is a wine we will be drinking. Yes. We'll be tasting. And so the wine will reduce? Well, yeah, we only deglacé a little bit, so it's going to reduce right away. And again, okay. the, the, the meat's going to suck up the wine. Right. It's going to, we have a big surface area. Again, with the surface yeah. area, such a such a wonderful tip we've yeah, carried. The right, pot, the the right pot for the right for the right dish. And this is some beef stock. This is some demi glace. Demi glace. And now, what's great about this pasta is, and gnocchi in general is, it's very important that you cook the pasta with the sauce a little bit. You know, it, so what happens is, the pasta will, will absorb the sauce, and become part of the dish, and the starch from the pasta will release into the sauce and. Give it that good texture. So, so if I was just to take this, put it in a pot, and then pour the sauce over it, not, that's a big mistake. Not finishing it off, right? All right. So the gnocchi is not fully cooked at this point. Is that correct? Well, it's it's it's, it's almost it's, it's there. It's, it's almost there. See how they floated, and they it almost doubled in size. Yes. They kind of puffed up like a yes. nice little pillow. Is that some parsley in there? Is yeah, there's herbs in there, chives, salt, pepper. I wish we had time to show you that recipe. But I know. That's for another day. Gnocchi is such a fun thing to make because you can really be creative. We're going to take that. And are you finished with this pot, Chef? Yes. Okay. Okay, so here we go right here. Beautiful. So this is, this is key here. Finish now, if you, see, yeah, if you see the sauce now, yeah, before it comes back up to a boil, we don't have that nappe. It's more like a jus. Now, the starch from the gnocchi eventually will start to release. Okay. The sauce will start to coat the pasta nicely so that when you get the pasta, you're just not getting it. You're getting it you're with getting the sauce the and everything. Flavor. Everything stuck to sure. it. Yeah. So we're almost there with that. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen. Ready to plate, Chef? Yeah, so we're ready to plate. Excellent. What we're going to do here is we're going to finish this lightly with just some grated Reggiano, Parmigiano. Of course, what a fitting ending. And some tomato concasse, a little acid to help cut. And a light, light end too. Mm -hmm. That looks fabulous, Chef. This is my favorite way to cook. This is, this is what we call a la minute kick cooking, you know. A la minute. A la minute, just cooking it right to order. Mm -hmm. I love that you added zucchini too. It's a little bit unexpected. Well, yeah, it adds, light, it adds a little crunch. It's a light summer vegetable. Yeah, and it's going to um, add a little texture, flavor. Ready yeah. to have some wine with this? Absolutely. And we're going to invite back Daphne and Kevin. Hello again. Welcome Hello. back. And what do you think of Chef's rustic take on cuisine and how it will marry with Cote d'Ivoire? Again, it's perfect. You know, Cote d'Ivoire is all about simplicity and good, arty dishes. So. Yeah. Perfect choice. Yes. Well, this is a Côte d'Iron village. Cheers. <laughs> Wonderful. Salut. Salut. So, Kevin, what do you think about uh, the pairing of this with, with it at the restaurant? How do you think it would go as far as marrying on the list? Oh, I think it would go great. You have a lot of the, you know, you got the short ribs in that just those you? braised mushrooms. It's going to go fantastic with the, uh, the earthiness and this little subtle spice to the rondelage. Mm. It's Grenache Syrah, so you have the nice spice of the Syrah. No. You could taste the food differently with a fork and a spoon. It has really? two different, it has two completely different flavors. You take when you up eat on that, that gnocchi with a, with a fork and you're just getting the gnocchi with a little bit of sauce mm -hmm. on it, or you're getting a spoon with the mushrooms, the zucchini, the sauce, the gnocchi together. So true, almost soupy. Kevin, it's you have another wine dish. to showcase for us, don't you? Mm. A little heartier than the first. Yes, this is a vaquiras. So vaquiras is very rustic, but still mm. very and nice and spicy at soft. the end. The tannins are yep. very mm. easy. Now we have a third wine. Yes. So Please tell us wine. about this one. It's also a vaquiras from a different estate. Um, the first vaquiras was only Grenache and Syrah. This one is uh, Grenache, Syrah, Mourvèdre, and Sanso. So it's mm -hmm. more grapes, more different grapes, and it's uh, very old vines. Uh, the Grenache vines are 100 years old. 
And there so, are 6,000 vine growers, is that yes. right? So 6,000 people growing vine. Amazing, really it's exuberant a area, yes. really a whole culture. Yeah. And all these wines are very well priced. It's between 10 and $22 mm. retail, so you can really cook with them. It's, uh, yeah, that's it's, what I like about them. It's they're, 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 affordable they're luxury. They're definitely non, um, mm -mm. Kevin, non pretentious wines. What do you think about this wine we just finished? I think there's a great balance to this wine. A little less spice, but really just a, a fantastic balance between tannin, fruit, earth and wood and that's for the price that these wines are at I mean we definitely be selling them in our restaurant and I think that they really play really well with food the amen. Rhone wines really yes, play well absolutely. with a lot of different cuisine not only just French amen to that Kevin and chef Chris Carducio from table 31 Mia and of course Dante Payon from Rhone Valley Wines. thank you for having us what a spectacular day from the pleasure, chef's kitchen pleasure to be here please come back soon thank you we will <laughs> thank you Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. Flowers on the set provided by Nature's Gallery Florist. Distinctive floral arrangements with European flair. Experience the pleasure of Côte de Rhone wines. Imported from southeastern France, these wines offer diversity and value. Most of the production is red, but whites and rosés will delight your palate as well. Heralded for their fruity, spicy, food-friendly flavors, Côte de Rhone wines are a perfect match for your everyday meals or for any special occasion. You can always celebrate with Côte de Rhone wines. Highly and consistently rated by the press and pursued by wine lovers, Côte de Rhone wines are available at retailers, wine bars, and fine restaurants nationwide. Well, you know, first of all, what we're working on here today, most of the times, you know, people make mistakes at home is because they don't have enough power, they don't have the right equipment. This has the power, and uh, Mr. Steve Horn and what he produces here at the Chef's Kitchen is by far you know, a pleasure to come here all the time. And uh, as a professional, working with professionals on this uh, set has, has been, a, been a real pleasure.